that day I live in a dream Welcome to Only Trying to Help, the podcast where we try to help you be helpful to other people. My name is Kate Watson. I'm here with a good friend of mine from way back, which I love, by the way. I love when I can do that on this show and like bring somebody on who I just haven't seen in a while. Marie, thank you for being here. Would you do me the honor of introducing yourself to the audience? Um, yes. And I have suddenly forgotten what I do and who I am. No, um, <clears throat> so yes, I'm Marie and I am the owner and sole therapist of Genuine Connections Psychotherapy. It's my private practice and I specialize in grief and loss, specifically the death of a child. The reason I am in this field is because I am navigating a life without my son Harvey and it's been eight years ago now that Harvey died. Um, he died at the age of four. And, you know, other than it being like against nature, you know, to have a child die before their parents, um, it's really been a journey. And the thing that I found to be most helpful when we were navigating death and grief right after Harvey died was connecting with other parents like me because I had questions. I had a lot of questions and some of those, I will tell you what they were um, and why it was important that I hear from other parents. And so, you know, after doing two years of like a parent loss group, um, through hospice of the Chesapeake, shout out to them because I'm currently volunteering with them too, which is exciting. Um, I made it a mission to to a second career as a licensed therapist for the purpose of doing what I do now, which is helping parents navigate life without their loved one. And because it's a it's a train wreck you know, sometimes, and you really need some help from the conductor if you, if you don't know what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and, and sometimes I am that person. That's who I want to be. Um, and that's what I do. And I love it. Marie, how difficult or easy was it to find those parents who you wanted to talk to and ask your questions of? Okay. Well, that's a really good question. Um, and it's another reason why I do what I do. So Harvey, which I'm really glad I get to talk about him. He, as you know, but listeners don't, he had a very complex medical situation. Um, and it started from when he was in my belly. So we knew that he was going to have some struggles, but we did not know to the degree the struggles were going to be. And they kind of started compounding on each other. Um, and what ended up happening was he was on hospice. So in the summer of his fourth year, uh, we were doing another one of our very long stays at the PICU and Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. And shout out to the PICU, love them. Um, very special part of our lives, which is a whole nother thing we can talk about. Um, you know, because when he died, we lost some support, which was the hospital team. A community. You lost a community. Yes. It was a traumatic community to be a part of, um, mm -hmm. but it was community nonetheless. And um, when we were discharged from the PICU to hospice, you know, you, you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, that's, that's terrible. You know, that means he's going to die soon. You know, you know, the things that we think or the assumptions we make about what we know about hospice. Yeah. Um, and children's hospice is different than adult hospice, which mm -hmm. is not something that a lot of people know. Um, so it was through the, the connection that we had with hospice that we found the other parents. 
And they offered, and they still do, um, they offered a monthly parent support group for parents whose children have died. And we went to that every Saturday, you know, once a month for two years. Um, and it was life changing. Okay. You said it was life changing, which maybe answers my next question, but I I was going to say, did you ever not want to go? Um, yes. And I can think more, um, specifically about my spouse, not wanting to go. It's going to be 15 years that we've been married, like on our next anniversary. And we've been together for 22 years. And I, you know, a lot of marriages don't survive the death of a child. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful that we had a lot of years together before this happened. um, Because it, I I don't really know what it would be like. Oh, I'm I'm feeling emotional. Um, I don't really know what it would be like without my partner. Yeah. Um, And he would say a lot, like on the way to the group, I don't want to go, you know, but also knowing that it was important to me and it was helpful to me and, and he did find value in it. But I mean, come on, Kate, you know this, who wants to face (laughs) the hard feelings? This is why I asked the question because I'm imagining there are listeners who are thinking, ugh, groups, support group, that sounds like hell. That sounds miserable. And I don't want them to just write off what you're saying. Cause it sounds yucky. I, I wanted them to hear you say, yeah, sometimes you don't want to go. Uh, mm-hmm. and we went anyway, it's kind of like going to the gym. Like, I don't want to go there either, but when I go, I'm happy. I went, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really hard and it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Um, And, you know, the grief group was a part of that mindset. Like, we don't want to go because of obvious reasons. And it's going to be beneficial. And it it really has been. Truly. Truly. Yeah. If you're dragging your feet on something, it's because you know you need to do it. (laughs) Right? It's, it's, you don't want to because it's not fun. Um, and it doesn't give you the dopamine or it's, you know, boring, um, and it's still needed or required, right. In some cases. And yeah. in the case of the grief group, it's not always something that we wanted to do. I mean, cause we knew that we were going to be boogery crying, you know, we were going to hear some traumatic things from other parents, Um, we were going to witness other people's grief and, you know, that's not exactly like, it's not the date that you thought you were going to, you know, like we're going out together. We've got a babysitter for the other child and we're going to cry. (laughs) Marie, you were, you started to say it's not. And then you paused. And in my head, I thought this is not date night, is it? (laughs) No, it's not date night. And that was in my mind. And then you, you completed your thought and I was like, "Mm -hmm, yeah. So, okay. It, it makes sense that there are going to be times where you have some mixed feelings about joining this group, but deep down you wanted it. You sought this out and you yeah. said that it was a pretty profound experience for you having gone. Yes. Yes. Um, a thousand percent. Um, you know, number one, because I had questions. I had questions about what am I supposed to do? Mm. Like, what do I say? Right. So when we're out and about, you know, I'm having my, my Starbucks and my, you know, I'm doing target shopping, you know, and you run into somebody and, and then boom, scripting, right? The social scripting. Oh, hi. Oh, you're a mom. Oh, how many kids do you have? Yeah. Um, well, that's a complicated question, fresh in grief. Yeah. Because do I want to tell the stranger at Target? 
well, I have two, but one just died, you know, like, mm, I wasn't really sure how to navigate those, those types of real world problems that I was running into. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, I mean, it's take, it's eight years ago now that Harvey died and I am like a well-oiled machine when it comes to how I respond now. But let me tell you, when I was fresh into it, I mean, I had to make a decision. Do I lie or do I just say one? That doesn't feel right. Oh, I have one living child. So does it was a lot of um, really complicated emotions on something that happens every single day when we're out and about. Yeah. You know, as as adult people of childbearing age, I'm sure you get the question all the time. Oh, do you have a family? Do you have a and you're like, well, I do. And it's not probably what you're asking about. Like, you know, you want to know more. And I first of all, maybe I don't want to tell you more stranger. Um, And also. I'm not going to have the answer that you're expecting. Yeah. Are you ready for that? <laughs> and this is maybe a topic for another episode because it's not directly related to what we are speaking about. But I just want to say on the record that do you have a family is the oddest question ever. It's sort of like asking, does anyone love you? <laughs> <laughs> like, no? oh, 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 hi, person that I think I have a shared quality with. Let me ask you really private questions about your life immediately. And it's yeah. like, uh, uh, yeah. you know. I mean, I think when people ask, do you have a family? Like the yes or no question. I think they mean, are you married to a person of the opposite sex? And do oh. you have children? Um, right. Exactly. But what bothers me is that that's what they mean. <laughs> yes. And we both know that that's what they mean without them saying that that's what they mean. I know that's what they mean. And I want to say, listen, if you are concerned that I'm like lonely in this world, please don't be concerned. I, in that regard, I have a family. It is not what you think a family is, but I have a family. Thank you. I, I do not spend my birthday alone. <laughs> I, I, I blow candles out with someone who loves me. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and concern. Yeah. Peace and I blessings. Do, yeah. I do think that is a topic for another day. I want to get back to what you wanted to talk about, but I just felt like I had to say that. Um, yeah. Here's what I want to ask you. Knowing that our audience is, it's not necessarily therapists and social workers and psychologists. Mm -hmm. It's really just people who think of themselves as helpful people. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to us a little bit about some of the well-meaning things people did thinking they were helping you and maybe you were like mm, there's a better way to help me C can you talk to me about that a little bit I can um it brings up a a memory that one of my friends who I know from Towson okay she tells me often that my Facebook posts uh, about my experience have been really helpful to her. And one of the things that she said was most helpful is what I want to tell you about right now. So it has to do with the something you've already talked about on the show. It's when people say, if you need help, let me know. If you need something, let me know. I'm here for you. You just got to tell me what to do. Okay. Uh, you're shaking your head and you're like, yes, we have talked about it. Yes, I've heard it. And that is like the most well-meaning thing that people say that is actually not helpful. <laughs> right. It's, and it's like, it's the quick thing, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I'm here for you. I'm going to help. I want to help you. You just got to tell me what you want me to do. And it, Fat chance, fat chance that I'm going to tell you that I need um, who knows, toilet paper, 
probably not going to tell you that. So then, you know, yeah, you have, all, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so helpful. And you feel really good about yourself, but ultimately um, it's not helpful. Yeah. So, so what is helpful then? I decided to give people solutions here. If you, if here's what you can do, mm -hmm. here's what people think is helpful. Here's what is actually helpful. And the thing that my friend told me that was life changing for her via this experience was just show up, mm -hmm. just show up Yeah. and don't, don't ask, you know, what can I do for you? Drop off a bag of groceries on the porch and run away. <laughs> like run don't stay to talk don't be nope. don't think you're going to be a, an entertained guest like drop the goods and run and the goods can be anything from household stuff to things specifically for the person that you know they enjoy like take the thought of let me know what you need and take it like one or two steps further you know gee i know this person really likes smutty novels i'm going to buy some and send them to them they may not read them because they're grieving <laughs> but you know with some some candy or whatever and a good book they have the choice yeah but what, what my friend did she took the show up to heart and she came to my house with a bucket of cleaning supplies and cleaned my house for me. I'm raising the roof. She's next level. I'm telling you, like a unique find, a diamond in the rough. Like she, she's like, well, I know you're not going to tell me that you, you need someone to clean your toilet. And I'm like, exactly. She's like, so I'll do it for you. I mean, talk about a love language, right? Anticipating the needs of someone else is like master class and how to be helpful right and, and and i will get down in the dirt with you i will clean your toilet um, i will clean your toilet i think you know back to our question of do you have a family clearly you do i mean that's a sister mm -hmm. yeah yes and she came i had a had a <laughs> i had a 10 month old baby at the time so she knew that I was in the trenches. I was breastfeeding. So like it was, it was a lot happening at that time in our lives. And as everyone can attest, whether they have children or not, when you are down in the ditches, in the trenches, you're not cleaning your bathroom. It's not happening. No. Um, and so she knew, she, she knew. And, and she came and she solved that problem. And it was not only was it helpful, it was really healing to my heart. I'm talking about it eight years later with you on a podcast. That was more than let me know what you need. It's, it's beautiful because it was, um, it was hearing what you were not even saying mm -hmm. and and the willingness to do it, even though it's something that's a really shitty task to do, quite literally shitty. <laughs> Actually shitty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, so much about that is just, is, is a stunning show of friendship. Stunning. Like they should make movies about that. Um, and so thank you for sharing that. Sometimes I think, you know, you said, okay, let's take let me know what you need one step further or many steps further and just show up for people. I think one step even further from that is to message someone and say, I'm coming over, I'm bringing cleaning supplies and I'm bringing, and I'm going to clean your bathroom. I only want to hear from you if the answer is no, please don't. And then I will not, but like, you don't have to answer. Yes. Thank you. That would be great. I, you don't need to approve of this. I want mm -hmm. to hear from you though, if you disapprove. Um, and so if, if my presence would be a bad time right now or harmful in mm -hmm. some way, tell me to get lost. But otherwise, if I hear nothing from you, I'm showing up with that bucket of cleaning supplies. 
I can't shake my head yes any harder without it cracking or falling off. Um, you know, I understand that, and it's so interesting because there's like two sides to the show up coin. I don't want anybody coming to my house unannounced. I don't, literally, like maybe my parents, maybe, because I love them my, and my husband's parents, but nobody else. Well, this is why you said drop the bag of goods and run, right? Mm -hmm. Because don't, don't interfere. Right. And, and so, so there, there is, there's some context to the just show up thing. And, and I love what you brought up about boundaries. I may need support and the don't interfere part, right? So, so the context is important. There's different levels of what show up can look like, right? Showing up, like you said, like I'm coming to your house, say no if I can't, otherwise I'm coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do it that way, you know, to respect the boundaries. Yeah, I think you're, you're just, you're, People probably knew this, but maybe you and I just feel a responsibility to say context matters. What kind of relationship do you have with this person? You know, you're praising your friend who came over to clean, but this is someone in your inner circle who's mm -hmm. allowed to just show up. Um, and so folks, we're asking you to do that assessment. Are you the right person? Is this the right time? Maybe you do want to send a message first, but I think the the subtle difference between saying, is it okay if I come over right now and then waiting for someone to say yes? I, I wouldn't do that because you're forcing mm -hmm. that person to say, yes, I do need your help. I don't want to make someone say, I accept your help. I'm saying I'm coming unless you say I don't accept your help. And if you say no, I'm out of there. I'll leave you alone. But um, I'm not going to make you say yes, please, because I think a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't. And um, again, this is where I kind of feel like our society has let us down, you know, and feeling like asking for help or needing help is an honorable place to be you know it's like when somebody needs help the bigger picture wants to only do the minimum or you know just kind of want to be like okay get yourself together you know it's you, you you can figure it out figure it out for yourself um i really like what you said about wording what you're saying so that the person you are supporting doesn't need to do a lot of thinking on their end. And I have made a pointed effort in doing that when I support other people, like I, with the phrasing, especially like, Hey, I'm going to order you dinner on Friday. I know what you like, or maybe I don't because you're a stranger. Cause I will do this for like people in my mom groups that are like going through something. I'll like send pizza to their house. I'll just send what a crowd pleasing order, cheese pizza and breadsticks and maybe a little cookie or whatever they have. And I just send it. It's $25. That's yeah. not a big deal, but that parent did not have to think about a meal. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to make any decisions. They didn't have to worry about it at all. I took that off their plate for them without them saying anything other than Friday food. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think we underestimate the effort it takes when we ask people, well, what time and how many pizzas? And so what do you like on your pizza? Everyone's like, oh my God, get the fuck out of my phone right now. Like I have a million things to worry about. It's only Wednesday and you're asking me about Friday dinner. I don't know what I'm having for lunch in 10 minutes. So the way that you do that, Maria, is you make it as, as little burden as possible on them. Like this is just happening. Um, you can even forget that I told you this and it'll just appear and that's fine. It'll just show up. You'll get a little notification and go, oh, yay, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's what well-meaning support looks like. Yeah. Taking the stress or the burden out of it for the person and not adding to it, not adding to it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
this has been so nice. Um, I think in many ways, I'm just imagining the listeners like taking some deep breaths because we're, we are equipping them with something they can actively do rather than just what we think they've done wrong. Um, <laughs> and I'm imagining people are going to listen to this and maybe even put into practice right away. I know somebody who I could send pizzas to tonight. Um, and so I just want to thank you, Marie, for doing this. As we're kind of wrapping up here, is there anything that you didn't get to say that you really wanted to say on this topic? Mm. Is there anything? I'm sure there there are a lot of things, right? Um, I could go on and on. Um, I have to answer these questions for myself. You know, like, what is today going to be like in the face of death? You know, um, some might say, well, it's kind of a gloomy or a morbid out take on life. And I'm like, it's reality. You know, um, death is the thing that unites us, death and birth, right? Death is the thing that unites us and we can't escape it as much as we would want to. And so I like to lean into what death has taught me. And it has taught me to enjoy the little things, right? Those are the things that really matter in life. You know, so when you're just, you know, contemplating decisions or where you want to see yourself in five years or what are the little things that are happening or that you can do that are going to bring you joy and bring you peace? Yeah. And then how can you protect those in the process of living in this dumpster fire uh you know that we're currently in you know um those little things include like a bra with no wire in it thousand percent or like a really snarky sweater you know have the day you deserve right um it's a it's a favorite coffee mug uh the little things and, and that that's what matters right so it's like find what is going to bring joy to your life because death is going to be there. And sometimes it's right around the corner. And, and having navigated this world without somebody that is literally a part of me, that um, made me a mom, that has, has like changed my life in more ways than one. That's what matters, you know, and remembering them, honoring them, that was another thing honoring who you love or your special person that has died is never a shameful thing to do mm -hmm. and i really impress upon everybody i talk to to honor their loved one in every way that feels right for you talk about them and then the last thing I think would be to find people who have been through what you've been through. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no truer validation than speaking to other parents who have been where you are and learning from them. Yeah. And that's what I do now. And I just feel like it's so important. Uh, when you spoke about honoring your person who you've lost, I thought, well, in there is another way we can help people who are going through loss is to just suggest while you're out to dinner with your friend who's lost someone, you say, Hey, we all have drinks. Let's do a toast to Harvey. Um, yes. Let's do a toast to your dad who passed. Let's, let's honor so-and-so let's, let's go to the jukebox and play a song that we know they would like. Um, I think sometimes when people get nervous to talk about death, it's because they think the conversation automatically will be sad, but it actually mm -hmm. can be very happy if you're yes. focusing on the wonderful things about that person. I can't agree more. And let me tell you, there has been several times in the last eight years since Harvey died that people have included him in ways that I didn't anticipate or expect. And it has been extremely healing and like just brings a sort of 
mm, warmth to you that you don't necessarily expect. I want to hear them say Harvey's name. I want them to tell me what they remember because while it's bittersweet, it's more sweet. It's more sweet. And I'll never turn down an opportunity for someone um, that wants to honor Harvey because, mm -hmm. because he was living and loved and legendary, right? And so talking about him honors that. Not talking about him feels wrong. You know, it feels like we're, we're missing something. Go there. Go there. Go there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what, that's what parents want. That's what loved ones of people who have died want. They want to talk about them with you. So go there, show up and go there. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think it kind of goes back to, um, you know, you mentioned you could be at Target and a total stranger asks you, do you have children? And you're like, do I want to get into this with a total stranger? What I want to say is when you're not with a total stranger, you're with your people, then what you want to know, I think is what you're saying. I think, I think you're telling us you want to know that you can talk about Harvey and they can handle it. They're not going to get sad. Your people, your loved ones are going to say, yeah, Marie, let's talk about Harvey. Um, let's yeah. honor him. And it helps you to know that they're all okay with it, that they're, they're not going to go, Ooh, death. Yikes. Um, that they're all looking back at you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go there. I'd love to, I'd love to remember some great things about him and how legendary Harvey is slash was, I think is legendary. He is. Yeah. It's, that's a hard one too. Right. So I sometimes like say that to myself too is, was, well, the thing about being a legend is that it lives on beyond you. So is he is he is a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could talk to you all day, but I, I think we we ought to start to wrap this up. Um, I want to thank you again, though, for your willingness. And, and you've you've reassured me that talking about it was the right thing for you. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> to the listeners, you know, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts that are maybe really specific to Marie, you're welcome to send them to us at the show and I can pass them on to Marie. If you'd like to send an email to the show, you can email me at Kate at only trying to help.com. That's Kate K A T E at only trying to help all kind of like it's one word dot com and i'd be happy to send anything to marie that's really more for her to respond to um and folks you can also follow us on instagram at using the handle at i was o t t h o t t h stands for only trying to help so that's i was o t t h that's it from us any final words from you marie have the day you deserve have the day you deserve